make a couple of comments and then um, open it up for uh, questions from the committee um, and, and, and comments as well, but um, maybe particularly focus at least initially on, on questions you have. Again, I think when we look at, at this bill, I want to make two things clear at the start. One, it's truly a pilot program, and in fact, we basically have three pilot programs in a sense built in our Achievement School District uh, principal turnaround and an ISO. And all of these things, um, you know, are, are, are focused on helping our low performing kids. And I think we've had a lot of good conversation about the fact that as we've outlined the number of schools that now fit under this new rubric, and frankly, this the focus of these is really even on the ones in the lower part of that category. Um, that you know, I know, I know my goal and my passion for this is making sure we don't have another three, five, ten years of kids sitting uh, watching another generation of kids not get the education they need to be successful when they get out of K twelve in North Carolina. Um, the second thing I want to say is today we're just um, in moving forward with this, we're just agreeing to move this forward to go to a committee. Um, and so we're going to have more uh, opportunity for questions, more opportunity uh, for, for tweaks. Um, there are a couple of um, and, and actually, maybe with that, I was going to make a couple comments. I, I will make one comment of one change that Representative Richardson asked about. I think I saw uh, here. We did add in a parent to the selection committee, a parent of a student in a low performing school. I think you had also made a, another recommendation, which we can talk about further. It was a little harder to, to put a, a to, to sort of think about a community member that might fit that category. So I, I'm, I'm perfectly glad to discuss that a little bit more. But we did go ahead and put a parent on because I thought that was a, a good addition and one that was uh, easier um, to sort of build in pretty quickly. Um, so maybe with that, um, let me just open up the, the, the floor to um, comments and, and questions. Maybe, maybe particularly on the bill, maybe questions on the bill as a first run and then additional comments. Representative Blackwell. I have a question. Um, unfortunately, because of the timing and the way we got scheduled, I wasn't able to be at the last meeting, so I may be asking you something that was completely <coughs> clear to those who were here. But uh, in what was I'm trying to find the, in the new draft provision the section where it talks about early termination of contract based on performance for an achievement school. Um, it was page seven in the old glass draft version. Of it, page twenty-four. Uh, my question is this, and I, I don't know if it's you, Mr. Chairman, or for staff. Um, as I read that, it says that you are sort of in trouble in operating this district with your contract if your performance is not above the average for all low performing schools that would have qualified to be selected. That sounds to me like a very, very low standard if we're looking for something to actually make a dramatic change, uh, I'm just suggesting if that's what it means that as this goes forward, uh, maybe we might could take a look at trying to ask for a little bit better performance before we are locked into five years uh, because they are 0 0.01 above the average of all the low performing schools, and we're trying to get them out of low performing, not just be slightly better than the average low performing. I, I think that's a, a fair comment. I guess I would say one thing in our conversations, and when we heard from folks last week talk about the, the Tennessee process, one of the 
things they commented on is, is the first two years, particularly in the turnaround, are, are, are the hardest. Now, you might make an interesting point before we should add something. That, because if you average them out over three years, that, if you have a tough first year, maybe if you're knocking out your third year, you know, I think there might be some questions. Maybe, maybe, we, should, maybe we should say, well, or at least in your third year, X percent growth or something. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a fair comment. I appreciate it. And then uh, follow uh, two other comments, and then I my intention is to be quiet. One is that uh, in the findings, uh, I am prepared to be convinced otherwise. But where we say in the third line that some North Carolina public schools remain continually low performing, I think we could state that perhaps a little more strongly by saying too many remain continually low performing. That's just thought. And then the final comment is sort of a, a pet concern of mine, but I think I, I believe I'm right on this. And it has to do with section five on page 28 with the evaluation. Uh, I would hope as this goes forward, we might could reword this to require that the, the independent evaluator get involved at the beginning of the pilot. There are too many times that we wait five years and then look back and we're told, well, we really can't tell you about this, this, and this because they didn't gather that information. And part of the uh, advantage of a pilot is if it is designed to collect data that tells you how you're doing against the goals that you identified at the beginning, not going back afterwards and trying to make what you got data-wise fit with where you started. So that's my comment. Yeah, and let me just follow up. I think you mentioned that at least to, to me previously, and I am in favor of that. I just just never got <clears throat> drafted back in, so I'm fine to uh, follow up to to, uh, to make sure that process starts on the front end. And I'm also fine with your <clears throat> with your prior comment. Maybe we can just consider it a technical correction. <coughs> follow up or additional comments, sorry. Representative Warren. Not sure where to begin, but and I will probably take too much time. But uh, just so Representative Blackwell, did you have a comment? <laughs> uh, I uh, have I'm respect for my elders. Oh, <laughs> 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 a week maybe. I think it's at least two months. <laughs> uh, I've been really, I've really struggled with this. And, and just so the members of the committee know, uh, Representative Brian and I were <clears throat> talked about this till late hours last night and began it all over again this morning. And quite frankly, as of late hours last night, um, as I weighed the bill, there's some things I really like and there are as always, things that uh, that I don't like so much. The things I really like are the fact that we're bringing, or we're continuing to bring a focus on underserved kids. And I think that it is incumbent on that, us to never let that out of our sight. Um, and they're underserved for a variety of reasons. So. Anything that helps focus the light on underserved kids and attempts to find ways to, to deal with that, I'm absolutely on board. I mentioned at our last committee meeting that I that this is still a fairly complex that's not me, is it? No. A fairly complex bill. And members of the committee during interim sessions we don't have because of Life gets in the way, time to get into all the weeds of a fairly complex bill. That's what we do in session and in committee meetings. Uh, I really like the innovation zone concept. I think that is, I, frankly, I'd like to see that as a standalone bill. Uh, but 
And I don't think that at this 11th hour, we need to start over-managing the bill. For this, for, if for no other reason, then it goes forward for committee to over-manage the bill. But, with, with, but in a context that will bring more public attention and, and more attention from legislators, not just this committee, but all legislators going through our legislative process. Uh, I sent Representative Bryan a list of 15 concerns I had with the bill. Some of them are micromanagement type concerns. So again, I'm not going to go through those. He's, some of them I've already been satisfied with. Some of them I'm not satisfied with the, with the response. But I can't help but come back to the fact that anything we can do to keep attention on serving underserved kids, helping them out, is something we, we should be doing. I am not deterred by the prospect that some things just won't work no matter how much we want them to work. They're not going to work. So fear of failure is not a deterrent. And given the fact that that we have some substantial opportunity to bring in more consideration, more input, etc. Um, I, contrary to how I felt last night, I feel today that uh, that we should move this. Forward. I don't want to see it die because if it dies here. It dies for short session, which means we don't even start working on it again to 2017. And then, given the fact that it, that it's going to, I think it's going to need to be pushed out. As you and I spoke this morning, President Bryan, just the process alone, just the, the physical process, is going to push it out for another year or more. Um, I don't think that these underserved kids can wait another year, yet more time. I do acknowledge that we've heard that, uh, that DPI and, and some of these schools are making some progress. Events have begun to overtake. And that's a good thing. I don't see this as a deterrent to that. As a matter of fact, we want to help that happen to more kids more quickly. So since it will go to a to a, a committee, uh, K-12 education, and this so happens I'm many of us serve on that. Um, uh, I'm satisfied that that we are at the at the beginning, not at the end, nor in the middle. We, as, as uh, someone once said, it. It may not be, it's not the beginning of the end, but it could be the end of the beginning. And then we can, I wonder who said that. How do I do So, um, with that, I'm prepared for a motion at the appropriate time. <coughs> uh, let me make one additional follow-up for uh, if some of you are thinking about additional questions. Um, on the timeline that Representative Horn mentioned, and we had some conversation about possibly um, allowing an, an IZUN to go forward more quickly if there was some interest in that, and, and we can have some more follow-up on that. Um, frankly, as I probably relayed Representative Ford, I'm so frustrated by the, by the uh, lack of rapidity with which we'll, we'll move forward in the sense that <coughs> you know, what, what effectively is likely to happen is even once a superintendent is hired, that initial year is effectively going to be, you know, you can call it a planning year if you want, but there's an allowance to completely give that, that superintendent time to visit these schools, go through the process. So unless there is a match, i.e. unless they find, you know, a, a district and a school that there's, there's either a, a, you know, KIPP or somebody or, or a super who says, hey, I want to immediately do an I and I'd like to do this, there's actually going to be one year likely where they're just meeting planning before you would go to the 17 18 school year where they would actually select 
um, probably only two schools, and that those would only be implemented in 1819. Um, just to give you a sense of um, my frustration, that I, I'm not actually don't love the, the the slowness to that process, but I understand there's some benefit to, to having a year where that superintendent is able to work with various folks across the state, come back with input to us that we may things we might need to tweak or change based on what they're hearing from the folks they're working with. So I think there's some legitimate reasons um, to do it that way. And I expect that we'll see in this process some districts take up action themselves uh, during that time frame because you know they realize uh, that this is out there. So um, just want to give you a little reminder of that actual timeline. This is not going to be, oh gosh, the school is suddenly getting taken over more. Um, additional comments from members? Representative Brock. Uh, I was going to say that's actually the part of the bill that I hate the most. Uh, because uh, I would say for people in my community, uh, that is it's a sense of urgency right now. We have schools that I represent in my district that have been failing for years. You know, I've got schools that I've been to when I was in uh, school uh, that have F's as a rating. Uh, and those, those kids can't wait, those parents can't wait for us to fix the problem. Uh, and it's not a Democratic problem, it's not a Republican problem, it's a problem Democrats have tried to solve, it's a problem Republicans have tried to solve. Uh, and it's something that we, we need, there needs to be, again, a sense of urgency, and I'm going to support uh, this bill, and I do support it, uh, because uh, it's, it's a change from the status quo. And what I, I hate the most, and this is really more so for my Democratic uh, friends, is we defend the status quo too much when we talk about education, uh, and we don't do enough uh, things that are different to shake it up. And I think this, at least, is, it is new, and we are, and we, we, we've heard the research on it. Uh, and we do know that it does take time for results to occur. Uh, and so I am going to support uh, this bill and moving forward. And I hope that we can work to try to maybe get a fast track this bill so kids and our parents can actually benefit from it. And they don't have to wait three or four years uh, you know, to solve the problem. Representative Turner. Thank you. Um, I would like to add on to Representative Brockman because I, I feel like we have to take every opportunity we can to serve students who are underserved for whatever reason. And as, as Representative Brockman has well stated, uh, and I, I don't understand why we wouldn't pay attention to this. So I'm excited about the opportunities that are afforded us through this bill. And I, wish everyone success as we go through the weeds. I realize that we're still at pretty high level, but um, you know, as we get into it, it is hard work to make change. And so I'm looking forward to that opportunity. Thank you for bringing this forward. Thank you. Additional comments, Representative Harvester. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to thank you uh, for the, the work that you're doing on this and, and staff as well. I know this has been a, a very um, intricate process. And I uh, want to echo the comments that were just made by Representative Brockman. Uh, I believe he's exactly right. And, um, I believe that uh, at this point in time, we need to move this forward and continue working on it. Additional comments? Can let everybody get out early tonight? <laughs> um, well, Representative Horn asked for a motion. And I guess I would ask if you would like to adopt the report with permission for the staff to add today's uh, committee proceedings and make any necessary technical changes. So moved. I have a motion to have a second. Right here. Thank you, Representative Malone. Uh, with that, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the ayes have it. Thank you, committee members, for your work, and we'll look forward to working on the report.